As you may know by now, I'm living in a one-room apartment which doesn't really look that visually appealing for creating videos. Empty walls, a lack of light sources and way too many books that I don't read. Straight up boring as fuck. The only effort I made so far in order to make it look better was switching the camera angle and changing my desktop background. That's pretty lazy, right? <laughs> As we're still in lockdown here in Germany and I film the majority of my videos right here at home, I thought to myself, why not turn this boring bedroom into a dope ass high end YouTube studio? So that's what I did. That's not too bad, huh? Alright guys, today we have a big mission, we have many things to do. The first thing actually you should do before you decide on what kind of decor and lights you want to get for yourself. You should first think about what is the best corner in your apartment to actually use it as a backdrop for your videos. And for me it was quite easy to decide because I have a window here so I also have some natural light coming in and also on top of that I already have some shelves in the back here and also this top shelf. So that's why I thought that this corner of the apartment is going to be the best one for what I want to do. Before you actually buy all of your stuff, you should think about also which angles you want to have for your videos. So I basically decided on two main angles. The first one being uh, this one, as you can see in the back here. So yeah, this is the first main angle that I would like to have for my videos. So the camera would just go here on the tripod and would face straight forward here. So yeah, I think that this is going to serve well as a talking head. And this is the second angle that I want to have uh, for my videos, which is more of an editing setup angle, <laughs> I would say. I already used this frame uh, for my Lightroom tutorial. The back is just way too empty. There's nothing on the wall. That's why I decided to fill it with something. So I'm going to show you now what I want to change about this place in order to make it look better. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to get rid of some of these books. Maybe not all of them, but many of them have to go. I'm going to put some of my camera equipment back in here, install an LED strip in the back of this shelf, also maybe back here in the cardboard. Then I obviously have to get a new studio light because the one I use right now is just... It's just shit, <laughs> straight up shit. And last but not least, I decided to fill that wall back here with a custom made neon sign. So that's going to go up on this wall and now we're just going to start and we're going to get rid of these books. <laughs> uh, let the games begin, anticipating the main event. Crowd decide and lights get dim And the show don't start until I step in I display so proper crowd and show rock of what I got Wow! <laughs> There's an old iPhone of mine. <laughs> no way. Let's actually check if this is still working. Oh shit, I think... <laughs> no way. The screen is coming off. This thing is broken. Can you see that? Oh no way, it's turning on. <laughs> like the Apple sign is just like turning up and down all the time. But I think it's not working anymore. Okay, let's get going. You're turning up, say. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're turning up, say. Oh yeah. This should uh, work for now. <laughs> okay, so I think that this already looks a lot better now that the shelves are empty. I'm going to think about what kind of gear exactly I'm going to put there after I installed the LED light strip. So that's the next step for now. All right. Okay, so this is the first light strip, another light strip. And the base. 
I found them to be some of the best LED strips on the internet, at least a lot of people said it, because you can actually change the color of each individual LED instead of just the color of the whole strip. So I have to plug this one into the plug socket, connect these ones to this one, but um, there is one problem uh, with this whole thing. As you see, there has to be some connection between this one and this one. So I actually think that I have to drill through the cardboard and like let it run from down here, from the plug socket up, through here, back here, through there, back up here, and then it's going to end in the end up here. So yeah, wish me luck. So I actually got myself this old wood drill from my brother. <laughs> I hope this is going to work, man. <laughs> I'm gonna try it with this one. That is not good. I did just the exact same shit on the other side. <laughs> Man, I'm so bad at this. Okay, so now I have one hole on the left side, one on the right side and two scratches. Well done. <laughs> We're just going to see if uh, the LED strip fits. Uh, yep, that should work out. Same here, let's do it. Plug socket, LED strip. Whoa, didn't expect them to be that bright. I mean, it, it doesn't look 100% perfect, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I got it to work. All right, let's connect it to the app. Add a new device, new light. So it's just pairing the light strip right now. Hmm, oh, next, done. So this is red. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm feeling like a gamer now. Blue, pink, red, green. Wow. <laughs> There's the option to actually paint what parts of the strip are going to be influenced. Let's say I want to have the top one in blue. Oh, that was the bottom one. Man, that's so cool. Holy shit. You see, I, I just paint on here. Like if I want to have that bottom strip in, in red, I just click on red and I just paint here and it's going to be red. <laughs> so now I can perfectly adjust which parts are going to be which color. This is really, this is awesome. This is awesome. Rainbow. <laughs> Man, I love this stuff. <laughs> All right, so I think that the LED strips themselves already look pretty good, um, but now I need to take care of this huge standing lamp. I actually like the shape of this, but I don't really like the light color or light temperature of it. And yeah, I found also from LifeX um, a light bulb that you can just like plug in and connect to your phone as well and just use it the same way as you would with the LED strips. I'm going to try that out. Okay, it's already brighter than the other one. And now I can change the color temperature of it as well. Red, yellow, this is awesome. This already looks a whole lot better than it did in the beginning. All of these lights and colors in the background just give the image a lot more depth because the background is more separated from myself. Also, especially in small apartments or small bedrooms like the one I have here, I can't uh, have different light sources to, for example, get one to light my background and one to light me in the front um, or else I just don't have any space for anything else. You should look for practical lights that you can install, which are going to be there permanently, but still you have some options 
to create different environments and different moods by changing the colors of it. One cool thing that I actually found within the app is that you can create different scenes. So you can basically save the color and the brightness of the LED strip and also the lamp. And then you can just quickly tap on one of these scenes and it's going to be the exact same that you saved before. So yeah, I think that these lights are really, really useful because you can just create a specific mood within no time, just a click of a button. And now I'm just going to put some gear on the shelves to make it actually look like a proper YouTube studio. Let's go. I feel like the A6500 should also go on there because that's like the first proper camera for filmmaking that I used. It's gonna go up there as well. Well, I think that looks a hundred times better than before. Drone up here, gimbals down here, cable stuff down here, a few of the books that I kept, <laughs> still not going to read them, and up here also the lenses and the A6500. I think this looks amazing. Ah, oh, all right, so it's getting better and better with each thing that I change here. I really like the look of it already. And in general, I think it is always really important if you build a YouTube studio, find some decor or find some objects that kind of relate to your brand and don't just put some random stuff on there. But one thing which is definitely missing here is a proper key light because you can now see that in the background, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of contrast and saturation, but there's not that much focus on me. And especially when I'm talking to the camera, the focus should be on myself. So I definitely need a good light source in order to light myself. And a company called Godox actually reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and they asked me if I would like to try out their new studio light. It's called SZ150R and I was like, yeah, for sure. Like I'm still shooting on a $20 Amazon light, get it here. And yeah, that's what they did. And yeah, in order to see that we have to rewind a couple of weeks. So let's go back. Grid, softbox, carrying bag, the lamp, light stand. I fucking hate unpackaging. I need to clean this up now. So I've been using the SZ150R already all of the time when I was shooting uh, all of the uh, shots back here because I need at least some light in my face. So I was just bouncing it off, off the wall so that I have overall more light here. I can quickly turn it off in order for you to see what it looks like without it. This is uh, what you would have seen without the light on, which is quite a big difference. All right, so I wanna try to light myself from the left side. So when I'm sitting here, the light should be standing back here. I'm not sure if I can make it fit back in there, but I'll try my best. I think that looks pretty good. <laughs> so the reason why I put the light back in here is because then the light is only going to come on my face back here, but everything which is back here is not going to be affected by the light because the door frame is blocking it. And in that way, I have a very nice contrast on my face, but still I'm able to remain that glow from the back of the LED lights. All right, so that looks even better. Now I'm finally highlighted by this soft light source. Um, it's really important that you also get yourself a soft box. I myself chose the smaller soft box, the P90H it's called. I'm really happy that I chose the smaller one. There's also a 120 version, but if I would have the 120 version, I wouldn't even be able to fit it through the door frame here. So especially if you ha have a small apartment, it's worth it to get the smaller one. But yeah, I think that a studio light is really 
a must have for anybody who wants to create high quality videos in front of a camera where he's talking and where he's going to be seen. I mean, you can just look at the difference what it looks like without the light and with the light on. I mean, that's just a crazy difference. I mean, I could do this all day long. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. <laughs> so, I've been using the SZ150R already for a couple of weeks now. Maybe you've seen it already in some videos of me or maybe also on my Instagram stories. I've been creating some really unique lighting setups with this light and especially because it is not only bicolor but also RGB. So in general, I'm not an absolute expert when it comes to lights, but with this light, there's nothing really I can complain about. It is bicolor, so you can change the color temperature of it, you can dim it for from zero to 100%, you can use RGB. So that means that you can choose any kind of color that you want and you can also change the saturation of it. Furthermore, you have some different effects built into the light itself, which try to emulate a specific light situation. So there are different effects like fireworks, candlelight, police lights, TV, party mode. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with the light and it's super easy to use. You just have to twist the knobs on the back of it to adjust all of the things. So yeah, if you're currently looking for a studio light, uh, I can definitely recommend it and you can find a link to it in the description. All right, so we've already come quite a way. It looks a lot better than in the beginning, but there is one more thing that we have to do. Let's put it up. Alright guys, so the sign is up. Uh, it's been a little bit more effort than I thought, probably just because I suck at mounting things. <laughs> Ow! Um, but yeah, I think it looks super epic. The only thing which would have been nicer is if the color of the blue tone would have been a little bit more towards cyan than just like purplish blue, but that wouldn't really be a big problem to fix and post because I can easily just adjust the blue tones without changing my skin tones. Um, so it's still going to look good on camera. And yeah, why did I go for passion comes first? I think that this is like the mindset that I'm trying to live by each day when it comes to work because there's a lot of things distracting yourself in the creative industry when it comes to your passion. It's either money or fame or all that kind of stuff, but I think that you should always stick to what you are really passionate about and what you want to do for yourself. Adapt that mindset if you want to be happy in the creative industry. Um, so yeah, I think that it fits perfectly for what I'm trying to do here on this YouTube channel. And now let's look what it looks like in camera. Okay, so this is what the finished setup looks like. I think that the neon sign comes in really well well here. Um, it just fills up that space on the wall and also on top of that it's an additional light source for the backdrop and I actually saw that they sent a remote with it off and on. Yeah, I even have some different modes in it. Flickering I would say, blinking. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't really use those modes, but I have different percentages, so I can actually dim the light, put it to 10%, put it to 100%, which is really, really useful when I want to kind of even out the light sources in the backdrop. Thanks to Ash and Sketch and Etch, which is his neon sign company, for sending out this one. If you're also looking for a neon sign, definitely make sure to check out the link in the description. Uh, you will find a link to their website. 
So yeah, that is how I transformed my bedroom into a small YouTube studio. I still can't believe that it used to look like an old dusty library like just one day ago. I really enjoyed putting up all of this stuff and it made me realize again how important lighting actually is for your videos. It's not that important if you shoot in 4K or 8K. If you also have a cheap camera and you have a good lighting setup, you can still create really, really high quality videos. So that's it. If you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos, videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell. And yeah, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye bye.